Welcome everyone to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damian from RKB Paranormal and this is the season three premiere and this is pretty exciting because I have a new co-host joining me for this season and hopefully for more seasons to come. Ladies and gentlemen, blah, they got fucked up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Kelly Schaefer from K2 Paranormal Research as my co-host. Hello! <laughs> Here a, I am! That's a heck of a way to start out season three. Uh, <laughs> And, and Kelly, you know that I don't edit anything out, so all that's going to be right there in the intro. So, ladies and gentlemen, to start season three... Damn have... good thing I wasn't swearing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, to welcome everybody to season three, we have from Pac-Man Paranormal, Mr. Ernie Pack. Ernie, welcome to Life Beyond Six Feet, man. Hello, Hi, thank Ernie. you, Damien. Good to be here, man. All right, I appreciate you coming on. I've been wanting to get you on for a while. I just hadn't had a chance to to really reach out to you yet, but here we are. And the main purpose uh, of of really having you on the show is you want to help get the word out by about a new location that you and your and your wife have kind of overseen. Let's talk about Fort Duffield to kind of start things out. Okay. Yeah, we just signed a contract with the city of West Point, Kentucky, to start hosting investigations at Fort Duffield. It's a Civil War fort. Um, built in 1861 right here in town at the confluence of the Ohio and the Salt Rivers. Um, it was a really critical point for transportation of, of both men and materials as the North was moving South uh, during the Civil War. And so they built this earthen fort up there, and it's... It's very well preserved. It's probably the best preserved earthen fort in the country from the Civil War era. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, as far there's not a lot of buildings up. They've got a couple of replica buildings that they've put in place uh, just to give you an idea of what it was like. Mm -hmm. It's just basically dirt walls is all the fort really is. Uh, there's a cemetery up there. The fort itself was never challenged by the enemy. Um, it was, uh, deemed almost impenetrable because it sets up on top of a hill and they could see it coming from miles away, you know, but, uh, but there was a lot of sickness and a lot of death up there from accidents. Uh, they were built, trying to build a bridge across salt river to help get supplies across. A lot of guys drowned during that process mm. and then illness spread through the camp. And you know, there were, I don't, we're, we're still not sure the exact numbers. We know of about 48, 49 deaths that occurred up there. Wow. And it's, it's a place that's got activity. I mean, we, we have already got some really good evidence out of there. Uh, oh, wow. Not even trying to. What, what right. kind of evidence are you getting out of there? We've got a photograph of a soldier walking on the hill there uh, that is as clear of a photograph as you'll find from Gettysburg or any any other Civil War site. I mean, it is. Are, are it, you going to post it somewhere? So, yeah, it's posted. Uh, oh, we've cool. got a Facebook group, Hauntings of cool. Fort And you can find that, that, those photos there. Um, That's awesome. And that was taken, you know, we were just showing some folks around. Tim Coomer, I don't know if you guys know T-Dog. I've heard of him, yeah. Him and uh, some of his friends from River Bleh, River Bend Paranormal, nice. Indiana, uh, were up there last weekend. And we were showing them around. And they were just snapping pictures of the fort, just, you know, just random pictures. They weren't investigating. Right. Like I say, we we're just showing them around. And then they got home and looked and was like, whoa, who's this guy? And huh. they sent it to us and we were like, holy crap, that's a good picture. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So like no, I say, no. we've got a Facebook group. It's Hauntings of Fort Duffield. You can mm -hmm. go to that Facebook group and you can find that picture and uh, any any news about the fort there. Awesome. Now, now, how did y'all kind of come about finding out about this place? Did like somebody that kind of oversees the area, did they reach out to you or you just guys there visiting one day? And how did you come about this place? Well, I grew up in Valley Station, which is just about 10 miles up the road, mm -hmm. right there by Waverly Hills. Uh, most folks know me from Waverly Hills. I right. was the and one of the investigators there for a long, long time and helped with the fight to save Waverly Hills when they had the takeover attempt a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always known about the fort. Um, we just recently bought this house here in West Point, which is also haunted. 
It was built <laughs> in 1841. Yeah. And so we started really digging into some of the history of, of West Point and the surrounding area. And, you know, we, we wanted to bring, try to bring this town back to life. It's kind of uh, fallen on hard times over some mismanagement in the past. Mm -hmm. And so anything that'll help bring money in, we, we were open to try to help out with that. We found out that they had a guy that was uh, offering paranormal investigations at the fort, but they were basically just, you know, $20 a person to come up there and you investigate with him. Right. Uh, it wasn't a private yeah. overnight, anything yeah. like that. And, you know, with our experience hosting investigations at Waverly and guest hosting for public investigations all over the country, uh, we, we knew that they could do better than that. So I went to the mayor and the city council and the folks who run Fort Duffield. It's a, a nonprofit called Friends of Fort Duffield. I went to them and made an offer to bring some more money in, and they were e eager to jump on it. So right. we we have our first booked investigation coming up this Saturday night. So oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank it, you. It, it's it's definitely exciting, and, and the paranormal is a real hot commodity right now, so that's definitely a good way to, to help raise some money, not only for – you know the town but for the you know the fort as well to help kind of keep it preserved and stuff like that so yeah now how many times have you guys actually investigated there we haven't done a full investigation we've gone up there a few times with uh friends of ours from within the paranormal community uh I've gone up, we go up there two or three times a week in the evening and just spend a little bit of time up there looking around and kind of hanging out uh we did go up there a couple of weeks ago with uh, Greg Bopkin and Char Savoy. They were in from Minnesota and they stayed with us. And we went up there and uh, spent about, uh, I don't know, three or four hours up there and had some crazy activity that we weren't expecting. We actually are all pretty well convinced that we had a Bigfoot come up the hill there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, we were not expecting that. You know, we're, <laughs> we're no. looking for, you know, we're up there whistling Dixie. Right. And, you know, trying, to, <laughs> trying to get some kind of reaction that way. And this big guy comes step. It was during the full moon here a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this big fellow comes walking right out into the clearing there. And we're like, what are we seeing right now? And wow. So it was pretty awesome. But, and, uh, and and that right there will, will grab unreal. the attention. Of, that'll grab the attention of some more people too. Just just hearing about that, be like, hey, I want to go check that out too. So so you might have a double whammy there. Yeah, you never know. I mean, right. we, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that the paranormal and cryptids, things like that, go hand hand in hand. Mm -hmm. well, and, by definition, they do absolutely. absolutely. And uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that are big believers in the paranormal but not necessarily not necessarily believers in bigfoot or whatever i'm like well come come with us sometime <laughs> right <laughs> might feel differently but so, uh, we're, we're we're really looking forward to seeing what folks get when they go up there because it's it's kind of an unknown commodity really right uh, there are a lot of stores yeah. in town you talk to the locals you'll have some people that are willing to tell you tell you their encounters or their experiences up there with the spirits or whatever. But there's also a big segment of this community. That's like, you know, we don't talk about that. We don't, right. we don't talk about stories, you know, so it's hard to get stories out of the locals, but every now and then you'll, hear, you'll have someone that'll tell you, Oh yeah, that place is haunted. I can tell you some things. So. Right. That's awesome. Now, now if somebody's wanting to book an investigation, how would they go about doing that? Like what, what would the cost be for, for that? It is $400 a night uh, that runs from 7 p.m. until 7 a.m. Nice. Uh, that's for up to 10 people. So basically $40 a person if you can get nine buddies to join you. Right. Uh, if you have more than 10, then it's $40 for each additional person. Um, and um, um, are you, Do you have a maximum that you're going to put on that limit? Or, I mean, you know, you got 400 I, for... Well, there's only so much parking up there. We don't... We haven't gotten to the point where we think we had to put a maximum on it at this point. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, there's plenty of room. You know, it's it's a 
pretty large area and there's basically two separate locations. You've got the cemetery on one side of the hill and then the forts over on the other side of the hill. So there's a lot of room to spread out and you could So get, you could you could split groups up or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you could you yeah. could get 25, 30, 40 people up there easily. Wow. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean depending on how if we were having an event, I'd be comfortable with having say 40 people up there for like a public event. Right. Mm -hmm. but, cool. You know, it's it it's just it's something we're still going to have to work out. We're going to have to see how it actually works. Like I said, right. we haven't had our first private up there yet <laughs> so we'll see what happens well, so are there are there any facilities available like restrooms or break well, rooms or anything very, like that it's a very primitive place it's an outdoor location <laughs> uh there are uh some basically outhouses up there uh, okay there's not, there's not running water there's not electricity but we will be taking a uh, generator up there for people to have power if they want nice okay um, cool great and you could camp there you could, you know, as long as you, the only place that you're allowed to build a fire is in the fire pits that are already there. You mm -hmm. can't just put like an open fire out in the field. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, you could camp there if you wanted. And I think it's, I think it's going to be a place that people are going to like for that. I don't know if you guys have ever been to uh, like Haunted Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park in West Virginia. Not it, yet. Not, never been there, no. It's basically a big field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's 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 a Ferris wheel and a swing for right. the old amusement park. The rest of it is just a big field. And part of the joy of going to Lake Shawnee is just camping out there and hanging out and you know because it's it's a whole different kind of ghost hunting. Right. Mm -hmm. Saying oh we're going to the morgue now or we're going to go down to the body shoot or whatever. Right. You know. You're just sitting there watching a field basically and having the interaction you know get the same kind of activities and those kinds of things but it's just like a big camp out you sit around the fire and you tell ghost stories or whatever and you hang out right. and have a time you know roast marshmallows or whatever make some yeah right right yeah outdoors so, are always more difficult they're, right. they're difficult places to investigate but they're a lot yeah. of fun i think i mean i, I enjoy are kinds of investigations better myself right so. yeah now if if somebody wants to investigate but they don't actually want to say camp out there is there any like hotels close by say if they want to get a hotel that's nearby yeah you're not you're not far from uh like elizabethtown kentucky radcliffe kentucky fort knox you know the gold vault is just five miles down the road oh nice so there's a lot of hotels around that area okay okay now how, how does somebody go about booking an investigation when they go to the, to the facebook page as of right now that's the only way to do it is to message me directly through the you can do it through the facebook group mm -hmm. Hauntings of Fort duffield we're trying to get it set up through eventbrite where you can just go to an eventbrite link and click on it and boom you know book it that way but what we found out is that you know we've got like 350 available dates over the next calendar year that we're going to be opening up mm -hmm. you can't just click on a calendar and say available 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 You've got to enter mm -hmm. each specific date individually and oh. give specifics for each <laughs> night. You know, like what, what you're offering, how right. much it costs. You can't just copy and paste, copy and paste. <laughs> where, where are those data entry people for us? Really? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, need, I need to hire a, a tech for that, but <laughs> I'm broke, so I can't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And Where's those grandchildren? I, I, you know, this is how I type anyway. So, you know, it's not, it's not something that, that happens very fast for me anyway. Right. Oh, goodness. Well, it's definitely a place that's already piqued my interest, and I'm sure it's piqued Kelly's as well. And uh, Oh, yeah, I'm making notes. I'm making notes. Yeah. Noits. Even noits. 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 Even noits. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mixture between nice and no and notes. It's noit, noits. Noits. I got you. I, yeah. whatever that they're is they're nice notes <laughs> all right it may have may have to be a, a place kelly and mine and your team's kind of tag team and, and hit up one. Oh, one, right god one that'd be there. nice make it happen make it happen hell yeah that far away right yeah uh, yeah we we do a lot of joints together and it's because he's small i'm small and there we go yeah, that's Here the way go. to do it if you're a small team and you're trying to save mm -hmm. money get get two or three teams together I mean, oh yeah well, and it's so much fun Yes, mm -hmm. and you get to network with new people sometimes. Exactly. Right. Yes. 
and that's and my that, favorite part. And yeah. everybody's investigation style is different, so you know you're always learning. You're learning. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You learn new so I learned the the Estes method for the first time. Oh yeah, you know, that we, I'd heard people so talking about fun. it, but had never actually done it until right. we started collaborating with other teams, and they were like, "Oh, we're doing the Estes method." I'm like, "I've heard of that. Show me." Or right. the newest, different, different things, you know. The newest one I just learned up at the hauntings on Main Street was the Human Pendulum. Oh yeah, yeah, that it's was cool. Time time that was that cool. Time and they showed you that. Yeah, uh, yeah, Todd and Leanne. Todd and yeah. Leanne yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. like brothers and sisters, right? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the it first people that showed me that. Just amazing. Story. Haven't yeah. ha haven't tried that one yet. You're gonna have to show us that next time, Kelly. We're, we're... we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Make sure yeah. that you know what you're doing when you do it, because that's yeah. it's like playing with a Ouija board. Oh, if you don't yeah. know what you're doing, know how to open it, know how to close it. Uh oh, yeah. it could go sideways fast. Right now. I, I do want to take a little bit of a detour because you, you mentioned Waverly Hills and that's my absolute favorite place. I've been there three times and it holds like a real personal I meaning to you. me. <laughs> <laughs> it uh it holds a real personal meaning to me. Uh, my best friend who my team's named after, he actually told me about this place like back in like 2009 or something. And it was a place me and him always talked about going to one day and um you know, unfortunately, he was killed in 2011, and that automatically went to the top of my bucket list, even before I had a, my own paranormal team. And uh, when I first went there in 2017, like, I, <clears throat> you know, I say locations can affect you. Like, I got emotional as soon as I walked through the doors, but it wasn't because of the wow. location. It was because I had accomplished something that me and him had set out to do. Right. And... You know, I went like three times in 13 months and it's just so active and just so amazing. And even just being there on a on a on a public with 40 or 50, 60 people, it's so big. You can be spread out and still experience all this stuff. Like, I love it so much. I have it tattooed on my chest. So <laughs> I've seen that. So um, you see, you've I, seen this one, haven't you? I have. Yeah. Uh, uh, the room, the room number. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so, so how did you? I'm not going to show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So, it's so the morning. <laughs> it's on my chest. <laughs> so, so for those who may not know, how did you like a, like initially get involved at Waverly Hills? Well, like I said earlier, I grew up in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, basically in the shadows of the building. I mean, a bike's right away from it anyway. And back when I was a kid, we always called it the castle on the hill because that's what it looked like to us as kids. Mm -hmm. Um. The building shut down in 1980, or well, the last patients left there like January 1st of 81, somewhere around there, or the last staff did. And it was just sitting abandoned up there on the hill when I was a teenager. And it became a place that teenagers would go sneak in. Mm. Um, before I knew anything about it being haunted or had heard anything about it being haunted, it was just a big, cool place to go explore. You right. Know? Um because back then, I mean, it still had beds in it. It still had all the, I mean, you could go to the x-ray room and pull x-rays out of the file cabinets. And oh, wow. Oh, shoot. Like that. You know, every, it was like they just took all the people out and left everything else. Wow. Behind. Wow. So I spent a lot of time up there just exploring and hanging out as a kid and had some experiences then as a kid that, you know, I know were paranormal experiences. There's no other way to explain what happened. <laughs> and then when Tina and Charlie Mattingly bought the place in 2001 and started cleaning it up, I went up there once to help volunteer with the cleanup. And I was there for a couple hours and decided I was going to just start walking around, taking a look around the building. And this guy finds me up on the third floor. I was the only one around that area. And he's like, what are you doing? I said, I was just looking around. He said, well, that's not what we're here for. He said, well, when we start doing tours here, you can come and look around. He said, if you're not going to work, you can leave. <laughs> like, okay then. And so I left. And it come to find out that was Charlie Mattingly. You know, I didn't know who it was at the time. It just right. seemed like <laughs> being mean to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I left. But uh, once they started doing tours, I would go up there and I would pay for a tour and uh, pay for an investigation, whatever. And I would always ask Tina if she ever needed any help, you know, I'd, I'd love to come and help. And she never needed any help. Then one year I asked her that question and she said, well, we need some volunteers for the haunted house. If you want to help with the haunted house. I was like, sure, I'm in. 
anything get my foot in the door you know all right so i was a zombie cop that year <laughs> and, uh, zombie canine cop i had this dog this mechanic dog, <laughs> jump out at nice and uh uh so after the haunted house was over i just i never went away uh you know eventually i worked my way into tour guide and hosting the overnights and uh just i did a little bit of everything up there over the years and the place i fell in love with the place and fell in love with the spirits there and it uh it got in my blood and just kept coming back time after time after time and i i would quit for a while based on you know job obligations my with my real job or whatever i couldn't work right. necessarily so I'd, I'd i'd leave and come back leave and come back and just kept doing that and i guess i'm still in that cycle right now right, right. now i'm not there but maybe i'll be back someday soon who knows yeah right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now now it was with being there so many times over the years what's like some of the probably wildest things you've ex you experienced there whether it was on a tour or just out wandering by yourself um well par paranormal wise uh the wildest thing that i've ever experienced there and i always i've always said this i had a group that uh had a skeptic in the bunch mm -hmm. and when i would give my walkthroughs i would usually end it with flashlight communication right okay and you know a lot of people say oh that's been debunked well mm. yes there is a heat yes, cycle yeah. Yeah. that will cause those lights to come on and go mm -hmm. off randomly mm -hmm. but when they come on and go off on command mm -hmm. when they're sitting there not doing anything until you ask them to turn the light on and it comes on Mm -hmm. And you say, thank you. Can you turn it off? And it goes off. Yeah. I don't think that's a heat cycle. Okay. No. Anyway, mm -mm. I, I would end the tours with, I would say, you know, I've got some folks here that would like to communicate with you. If you could let them know you're interested in talking to them, could you turn the light on, please? And the light came on. And the skeptic that's with them, he's like, ah, come on. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> I've seen this on YouTube, dude. That's not even, that's not even real, you know? Mm -hmm. like, okay, thanks. That's fine. I said, well, could you turn the light off, please? And the light goes off. I'm like, thank you. And I said, well, guys, that's all I've got for you. The building is yours. If you need me, come and get me. I'll be down in the laundry room. Enjoy your night. <laughs> you should have been in the body shoot. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that's I'll be in the body shoot. It's, it's boring down there, really. So, <laughs> it really is. So I went down there and I'm sitting there having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just chilling. And I decided, well, I better go check on them. So, cause every couple of hours I like to make rounds just to make sure everybody's still where they're supposed to be and not wandering off on the ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. or whatever. So I walk up through the building and I find them all gathered around on the second floor in this one little area. And one of the girls in the group, she sees me and she comes running down the hall to me and she's like, Hey, 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 we were hearing voices down there and I thought I saw somebody go into that room. So we went down there and I put my flashlight down like you did to see if I could get them to turn it on. And they haven't done anything, but I know there's something going on down there. And I said, well, you want to want me to go down there and talk to them? I mean, they kind of know me here. And she's like, sure. Can you do that? So I did. And I said, you know, my friends here, think that there's someone in that room if there's someone in there can you turn that light on out in the hallway for me the light comes on <laughs> there you go skeptic is like oh here we go with this freaking light again i'm like dude that is her light you guys have been standing here for 10 minutes and nothing's happened as soon as i ask it comes on i right. said watch could you turn the light off it goes off he's like okay yeah but you're not going to convince me with this freaking light, dude. Okay. I'm telling you, that's, that's not convincing to me. Okay. You're going to have to do better. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and this is how he talks. He's a New Jersey guy. <laughs> it's my best New Jersey accent. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so I said, uh, I said, my friend here is not impressed with you turning the light on. Is there something else you could do to let it be known that you're, it's you and not me that's communicating right now. The light comes back on. He goes, Psh. Well, then the light rose off the floor about that high. Mm. Okay, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> and then it fell back to the floor. And inside, I had never seen anything like that. You know? Nope. So inside, I'm like, ooh. But with Mr. Skeptic that's already under my skin, right over my shoulder, I was like, get you some of that. 
And I turned around and walked out, walked out of the building. I was like, I was like drop the mic. I'm done. Love it. Love <laughs> yeah, it. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's, that's, so that was, that's, that's the wildest thing I've ever insane seen. Insane no. stuff. Yeah. It, it is. That, so, that place is just so crazy, Kelly. I can't wait for you to get there. Yeah. I I was all booked and ready to go. I did all my research. I had like I had like five pages of research and things I wanted to check, and then it got canceled. What was that for? What got canceled? It was the one that was with uh, the fearless ones. Yeah, that one. And us. Yeah. 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 We, that got canceled. Of the guy that was running the thing up there at the time. Uh, I got bombed. I get it. I get it. Well, you got your money back though, right? Well, yeah, I did. And it was just, it was, it was so, it was, it's the, like the number one thing that's been on my bucket list forever is to do Waverly because it was the first place I ever wanted to go investigating after they did the Halloween special with the ghost hunters and that ball rolled down the hallway. I'm like, I got to go. I got to go. Yeah. I got to go. Yeah. And so finally it got to be the point where I could actually do it. And it's like, I don't, uh, I'm then, still waiting. And then oh, Ernie cancels it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was me. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's totally I, cool. I got principles, and I will. I will. I will. I was. I was looking I forward to getting out of town. That's the whole thing. I was looking forward to getting out of town and go <laughs> hunt some ghosts. Well, come to Fort Duffield. Yeah, that's yeah. I really. It's go. also in the. It's near. It's close by. Mm -hmm. It'd be just as close as it was when we went up to uh, uh, the uh, Masonic Lodge. Yeah. Any, uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Morris Lodge, I think it is. Yep. yep. Morrison Lodge. Yep. Yeah. That was that was that's, only what a, that was only about what a three hour drive from us. Yeah, something like that. No yeah, big deal. Fifteen okay. minutes down the road from us. Nice. It's always faster when you're going home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, before I kind of touch on something else, I think the craziest thing that I remember experiencing there, and I don't know, I'm sure other people at some point experienced this, but I was, uh, some of, I want to say it was the fourth floor on the outside part where it's opened up and everything. Mm -hmm. I got to this one point, and all of a sudden, I just started having this real like sharp pain in my stomach, like I was being stabbed in my stomach. Yeah. And I was like, well, what the hell is that? And I... I and I was getting mad, like just out of nowhere, just getting like real mad. I stepped away about 20 feet, perfectly fine. Walked back to that same area, same thing. And like the people that was with me, they're like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I've been fine all night. And in that one little area. you right here. Yeah. Right. Just that one area. It was like somebody was just taking like a, a scalpel and just, just going to town mm -hmm. on my stomach. And it was, it was strange. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Now, Pac-Man Paranormal, that, that's that's just you and your wife, correct? Yes, sir. Now, when, when did you kind of decide to start a team with just you and your wife? Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, a lot of folks who know about us at all know that I met Denise. Tomorrow will be four years ago to the day that I met her at Waverly. Nice. And, uh, we were brought together by the nurse who was found hanging outside of room 502. Nice. Nice. Uh, that's a long story. Uh, uh, if you, depending on how long you want this show to go, I can tell you that story. Hey, go right but, ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. All right. Because I made a promise to her that I would tell her story every chance I got. If she, helped there me you go get to the bottom of it. So here we go. <laughs> um, the story of Room 502 that you find in all the books and all the documentaries and all the research that you do on Waverly Hills is that there was a nurse who was having an affair with a married doctor. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant. Uh, the doctor wanted to cut things off and uh, she got depressed. Some versions of the story say that she even caught tuberculosis herself. Mm. Uh, whatever the case might be, the story goes on to say that she gave herself an abortion. Oh, oh. Had an abortion, uh, whether she gave it to herself or had it done by someone there with her. And then she hung herself right outside of room 502. And that's the story that's told by guides. That's the story you'll find everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, that story doesn't make any sense to me when I think about no. all of the factors that go into the fifth floor at Waverly Hills and being a nurse there in the thirties when this happened. 
And I mean, you know, you think about it, if you worked at Waverly Hills, you were confined to Waverly Hills. It was almost mm -hmm. like a prison sentence by having yep. a job because you couldn't leave the property. They didn't mention taking contamination out into the community. Right. 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 There's an entire wing at Waverly we call the nurses wing because there were a lot of nurses that got sick themselves and that's where they were treated. Mm -hmm. A lot of them died. Um, nurses in the 1930s were lucky to bring home $25 a week. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Nursing was not a prestigious career back then. You were a woman in the workforce in the 30s. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was a menial task is what it was considered. It wasn't until like after around World War II that nursing became glorious, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and prestigious and respected. Uh, but anyway, the fifth floor at Waverly Hills housed two, class, clue, bleh, two <laughs> classes of patients. One wing uh, to the right of room 502, if you're standing with your back to the door, the wing to, to the right of room 502 housed patients who had tubercular meningitis, which is basically. Oh, that's not good. TB of yeah. the brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like common meningitis, it mostly affected young adults and children. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So those were mostly young adults and children in that ward. The ward to the left was for patients 12 and under with stage five tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. So kids that probably weren't going to make it. You know, really sick kids, 12 and under. And that's that's the patients that were there on the fifth floor. So you think about a woman who she wouldn't have done. She wouldn't have done that. Who gave up everything. You know, she took that risk for not much money. She had to have cared about those kids and those people she was working with in order to make that sacrifice and take that job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where but she, she was found hanging yeah. was in plain view. No, of both of those wars. Would she do that to the, those mm -hmm. kids? Someone that no. cared in that way? No, that no. never made sense to me. So I made it a point to try to get to the bottom of her story, and over time, I started getting a little bit of the time out of her. Did she ever? Did you ever find her name? Yeah, one night okay. I had a group up there. This is back when I first started giving private overnights. I had a group up there, and I had told them the story because that was basically the script for the tours was the abortion and affair story and all that. I had told them that it was just three guys that was there for the night. They had rented mm -hmm. the building and it was just me and those three guys on the Hill, no women at all. And, uh, did, like I did done that other group. I told them, I said, well, I'll be down in the laundry room. If you need me, come and get me. Right. And, so they came down there a couple hours into it. They said, hey, we're not getting a lot, whole lot. You want to come up and see if maybe you can stir something up? I was like, sure, why not? So we went up there. They were up on the fifth floor. They had all their equipment laid out right there under where she had been, been found hanging. And uh, they were asking questions like, why did you kill your baby? Who was the doctor you were sleeping with? Oh, gosh. Yeah. And oh, they're getting, they're getting nothing. And I started actually, you know, just listening to them and I started feeling bad because, you know, that's what I had told them. You know, I mean, they, they were just going by what I had said. Right. But I'm thinking, what if that's not what happened at all? What if that story is made up to cover up another story or whatever, you know, or what if it's just total nonsense? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Anyway, I said, OK, you mind if I chime in? And they said, sure, go ahead. So I sat down against the elevator door there right across from 502. And I said, hey, my name is Ernie. I'm going to be spending a lot of time up here with you. And I want to get to know you. I want to tell your story. I want to tell the truth about what happened that night. I don't think the story I tell about you is what really happened. It just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I promise you, if you'll help me tell your story, I'll tell each and every person I meet, like you guys right now. I'll tell them your story. Right. Um, but you got to help. Can you just tell me your name? And I paused for a minute and you hear a little tiny female voice from over in front of room 504 say, Sarah. Oh. And we all about, <laughs> I get a lump in my throat when I tell this story. We all about wow. jump. You know, I mean, we weren't expecting it to actually get a disembodied voice from 15 feet away when I asked that question. We thought something might light up. 
Maybe right. We caught on a right. recorder they could hear later. You know. <gasps> oh, we all fabulous heard evidence. Sarah. And we were like, whoa. So, you know, I started asking different questions. I changed the whole tone of the conversation. They started asking different questions. And that night started what's been going on off and on since 2009. Every chance I get me going up there having conversations with Sarah and trying to pull her story together. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019, June 20th of 2019, this lady had rented the building with some friends of hers for a private overnight. And I gave them their walkthrough. And I got up to the fifth floor. I told the story. Mm -hmm. And for some reason that night, because I wasn't supposed to go off script, for some reason that night, I said, but I don't really think that's what happened. If you guys would like to hear what I think happened, I'd be happy to tell you. And they all were they were like, sure, go ahead. What do you think? And so I told them Sarah's story that I'd been piecing together. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking and this woman's standing over there in the shadows and she's just grinning and nodding her head like she already knew what I was going to say before. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got done with the tour and I pulled her aside. I said, you acted like you knew Sarah's story before I would tell it. And she said, well, I've been coming here since 2009. I remember yeah. I've been working there since 2009. Mm -hmm. I'd never met her before. Somehow she had been coming on nights I wasn't working and vice versa. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Wow. But she'd been coming since 2009, once or twice a year at least. And she's a nurse. And she had always been drawn to that story too. She never thought it was right. Mm -hmm. So she had been researching. She had gotten the name Sarah. She had gotten all of the things that I pointed out in what I had gotten. And so her and I started talking and we wound up being married. We both have these tattoos now. Nice. Uh, it's all Sarah's fault. Uh, <laughs> it's all Sarah's fault. I love yeah. it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we started, as we started investigating together, we wound up, uh, people were interested in what we were finding. So we decided, well, we need to have a name. We need to call ourselves a paranormal team, you know. Well, I've always had the nickname Pac-Man because my last name is Pac. And what did Pac-Man do? He chased ghosts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. It made complete sense to me. Yeah. So we thought Pac-Man paranormal. And, you know, but it's got the K in there and, you know, because that's in my name. Right. But yeah. Anyway. We started a podcast that was a uh, it was one of the more popular podcasts on Paranormal Warehouse for a long time, and we would tell Sarah's story on there, and other people would chime in. They'd send us their own evidence that they'd gotten over the years that would coincide with what we had gotten and help us fill in the blanks in Sarah's story. Mm -hmm. And so we've pretty much got the whole story now, and it's you know over the course of now what fourteen years, mm -hmm. and it's probably thirty to. 40 teams that have sent pieces of evidence that have helped put that story together. Right. When you hear it, it makes a lot more sense than the other story. Mm -hmm. And Sarah's story is basically, she was the youngest kid in her family. She had an older sister she adored that caught tuberculosis and died at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Sarah decided she wanted to be a nurse. She wanted to work with kids who had tuberculosis. She was the runt of her family. That's her word. You know, it was the runt of the litter, actually. Right. E I love e it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she was very tiny, very soft spoken. She became a nurse at the age of 22, got a job at Waverly Hills. Because she was so small and so soft spoken, they thought it'd be a good idea to put her up there on the fifth floor with those really sick with kids. the kids. Yeah. Because she's small like them. She's soft spoken. They wouldn't be intimidated. Yeah. Right. Scared. So she was new, you know, she was one of the new employees. So she worked the night shift. She loved her job. She was up there for three years on the night shift. Doing, she called it heaven. I know that because I've asked her a lot of times, well, why aren't you in heaven? Because she says this was heaven. Oh. Yeah. You know, so uh, one night she's up there alone in room 504. Another staff. Five What's that? 504 or 502? She's in 50, 502. 502 is just a restaurant. Oh, okay. Got it. 
Okay. 504 is uh, was the nurse's station at the time. Okay, got it. Another staff member came up the steps. She never heard the bell ring for the elevator, so she knows he must have come up the steps. For a long time, I would get over the obelisk or, or EVP, whatever. We'd hear no bell, no bell. Hmm. And I thought she was talking about Nobel Peace Prize or something right. like that, mm-hmm. you know? And so I went down this rabbit hole of looking for someone that, you know, maybe one of the doctors at Waverly won a Nobel Prize back in the day or something like that. You know, I was researching that, trying to figure it out. Finally, one day I was sitting there and I looked over across from 502 and I see the bell for the elevator. And I think maybe she means no bell. So I started asking questions about that. And finally I said, do you mean you, you didn't hear the bell of the elevator? And the response on EVP was funny. It was like, yes, like <laughs> I've been trying to tell you this. You know what I mean? So anyway, this guy comes in the room behind her. He attacks her. She mm. tried to fight back. She's too little. He's too strong. She didn't want to scream and wake the kids, but she did try to mm-hmm. fight. But he got what he wanted. She was mm. a virgin until that night. Mm. Somewhere in the process, he hurt my neck. They covered it up. They lied. No baby. Rape. Murder. Mm-hmm. Help me. Help me. Now you think about it, that story makes a lot more sense. Right. That makes a lot more sense. A lot more sense. And it's all based yeah. not out of my head or anybody else's head. It's mm-hmm. through EVPs it's... and paranormal evidence that's been gathered right. over the right. course of a long time now. So as somebody so as somebody who's who um does historic haunts, have you actually put, uh, pinned it to an a, a, a real person? Have um, you found have you found her records? We actually found a grave that had Sarah and had the uh-huh. last I'm not gonna say it because it's local here and there might be mm-hmm. family here. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh that had all of that. And everything added up. The sister, wow. the age of the sister when she passed, everything. We think we had her great. We went back up there like six months later. And this is weird. People who think you're crazy are making stuff up when you say this. But we went up there like six months mm-hmm. later mm-hmm. to that same cemetery. That stone is gone. Sarah wow. is gone. The rest of them are there. But her huh. stone is gone. Wow. But, uh, she had actually given us a name of the person and the occupation who had done it. And I'm not going to say that either because those people are still their, their family is still here. Right. But we found in the employee records, that guy's name, the one who did it and that job description and did find that he was there. Now, as far wow. as Sarah, we can't find her in the employee records. But uh, we found a stone with her name, the same name that she had given us. Hmm. But the employee records are kind of inconsistent and, and incomplete. Right. Because mm-hmm. if you know the history of Waverly, a lot of the records were destroyed in the 37 flood because they were kept downtown at City Hall, mm-hmm. which was flooded during the 37 flood. And those records were lost. Well, this we think happened around 1933. So those records would have been lost anyway. Right. But we can't find a record of her yet. But we did find a record of the person that she says did it. Oh, wow. wow. That's wild. Yeah. I need you to send me a message on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go look for it. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now, I, 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 da- da- Damon will boost for me. He'll, he said, he, I can find things that people don't, they can't find. He, right. He's looking at me like, how do you do that? Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I sent her a picture. Well, Denise because, is a stalker, so she kind of stuck. It it was it was crazy. Just a few days ago, I sent her a picture of this little cemetery we found out we had across the road, and within like <laughs> two minutes, she had found the cemetery. Sent me a picture of of the name of it, and I'm like, "How the hell did you do that?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds like so, Denise. Denise is like, I mean, she's like, she's a stalker. I mean, it's all there is to it. Pretty much, yeah, she, yeah, she, right. Yeah. <laughs> Now I I noticed your hat haunted discoveries. Uh, how uh, are you like involved in that show any at, at all? Yeah, we we've filmed with Brandon and Mustafa and Kevin and Malia 
on two separate episodes, one at the Old Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky. Nice. It's going to be aired on nice. one. And then just a few weeks ago, we filmed up at Waverly. Nice. Nice. Um, I've so, actually, uh, he's actually going to be guest number two next week. Brandon? Yes. Yep, Brandon. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So he's a, he's a, guy. He's a guy. And, uh, and you mentioned the Old Stone Jail. I, I, I've been there twice myself, and that place is pretty cool, too. Yeah, and, uh, that's where Denise and I got married, actually. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, that's, very cool. That's yeah. pretty if cool. You know, if you know Father Casey Scruggs, he he married us at the Old Stone Jail, and our our reception very was cool. a ghost afterwards. Heck, yeah. That's that's awesome. No, that's that would be perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's... Uh, that would be perfect. <laughs> it was. It was a good time. That, that's 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 awesome. Um, so Fort Duffield, so the first official overnight started. It's coming this this Saturday. This uh, weekend, yeah. This weekend, yeah. um, which which Kelly has a big investigation this weekend too, which I can't make, and I'm very upset about it. But you know, it I'm going to call you and go na 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 na. <laughs> yeah. Like every Face, half an Face hour. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm taking a selfie with a demon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So again, if people want to, yeah, we've in- got. We're, yeah, we're heading up to we're heading up to uh, the United Methodist Village, and I'm taking my friends, two mediums, to go uh, check on Wendy Wilson, and um, we're going to have three. We're going to have two mediums and a reluctant in the in the house. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Now, what was that Facebook again? If people want to want, want a book, it is Hauntings of Fort Duffield. Um, it is a Facebook group, so you can just search your Facebook groups for Hauntings of Fort Duffield, or you can find me, Ernie Pack, on Facebook. I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. Uh, right. Just send me a, a direct message, and uh, we'll work something out. We'll find a date that works for both of us and make it happen. All we right. gotta make that happen, Damien. Damien, we, we gotta make that one happen. Yeah, because if we can camp out too, I'll take my air mattress out there, throw out my tarp, and I'll be good to go. There you go. It's a uh... get carried off by a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. You never know. I've had enough Bigfoot. I used to live in the Pacific Northwest. I'm very familiar with Bigfoot. <laughs> he they really exist. smells. They exist. Yes, I know they do. Yeah. Oh, seen them <laughs> been around them <laughs> yep. same here all yeah. right well everybody this has been ernie pack helping promote fort duffield everybody go check out the facebook page and if you can get up there and investigate okay. this place get up there and investigate this place and know me and kelly's gonna put it on our bucket list and uh hopefully get up there before it gets way too cold outside yeah yeah make it happen man i mean we we have plenty of open dates right now um, right. Oh yeah. We're, we're open every night except for when we're we going to town. We're going to. We be, got nothing in August. August is wide open. We're pretty much open in August. We're going to be at the Gettys, Gettysburg Battlefield Bash in July. Nice. But uh, ooh, I think Gettysburg. Our, yeah, it's that's always a good time. Uh, that's so, the next you know, one for me is Gettysburg. It's it, it's an awesome place. You need to go check it out. But. Yeah, just just let me know anybody that uh, anybody that's looking to book. Just contact me. Like I say, I'll check my schedule. If if we're going to be in town and nobody else has it booked, it's all yours, and we'll make it happen. All and right. Thank you for making it affordable. It. Yeah, that was right. one thing. We're trying to raise because the fort really needs help. The city needs yeah. help. The fort needs help. I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be repaired up there. A lot of things are, are, you know, a lot of the wood structures are rotting away and things like mm-hmm. that. Trying to, trying to keep it up, so it, it really needs help. But at the same time, I didn't want to charge people so much money that it, you know, broke the bank to go. Right. I think four hundred dollars for up to ten people is not a bad price for an. Overnight. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, one more question on that: Is the Ford covered underneath a, a nonprofit, a five hundred three? Our business. We're running the tours, and we're not a 501c3. Oh, 501. The money, the yeah. money that you pay, that we pay to the city, goes to a 501c3. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, cool. It, it goes to so the friends of Fort in, in the event that somebody felt as though they needed to spend lottery money and invest it someplace in a nonprofit, it would be a good one to do, huh? Exactly. Yeah, this money, mm-hmm. the, the, the proceeds that we bring in does go to the city. Good. To the 
City Preservation Fund doing business as Friends of Fort Duffield, or I forget exactly. Nice, nice. Not worded, but it's it's a five hundred one c three that. Nice. Yeah, it, it, that's good. That's good, very good for a good cause to preserve yep. history. I mean, you know, our history is being ripped ripped down and yeah. apart and everything. We're like not going to talk about that. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> this is preservation of something that's historical. Right. I know. It's like, why are you tearing down history? That's why history's there, so that we don't repeat it. We can learn from it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, everybody, make sure you go check out the Facebook page. Get it. Get your investigation booked. Ernie, thank you for joining the show, for being guest number one on season three. Kelly, oh. it, it was fun having you as my co-host. Thank you. Hopefully you yeah, come back for you. Hopefully you come back for I will two. do it again. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'll thank even you take for... a shower. <laughs> wow. All uh, right. I'll put my nose hairs for this. Good Hell job. Yeah. <laughs> I shaved my legs, but they're not visible. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, yeah. thank you for listening, and we will catch everybody next time. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you. You all, all right. take care. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.